Grace, mercy, and peace be yours tonight from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text tonight from Luke chapter 23, verses 39 to 43. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Do you not fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our, des our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. So far the text. The apartment building was about to collapse. The chief had called all the firemen out of the building. It was no longer safe for any rescue efforts to be carried out. A mother stood crying on the street corner, a policeman holding her from rushing into the building because one of her children was still left inside. A fireman with four children of his own stood watching, looked over at the mother, hysterical with grief. It was a moment of decision. It was a moment of clarity. What would he do? A young man, having dated a particular young lady for two or three years now, getting along very nice, gone through some very serious things together, had come out on the other end stronger. And now he had taken it upon himself to go select that perfect, clear-cut diamond. He had it in his pocket with him, a small little box, a little diamond. He was ready. He turned to the young lady, ready to ask, the question, what would she answer? It was a moment of decision. It was a moment for clarity. A young lady, having waited through three and four tests, was now anxiously expecting to hear from the doctor and the nurse called set up an appointment that afternoon. She went in and sat in the waiting room for what seemed an eternity. Finally, she was escorted into a small office and there she sat a while longer, anxiously waiting. The doctor, the specialist, came in in his white lab coat and sat down next to her. And now she wondered what was going to be the result? Another moment of decision. You and I have faced all kinds of those moments of decisions over our lives, moments of truth. We've all had them. Those are crucial moments, times of decision, decisive moments. And everything in our life seems to revolve around them. How will we proceed from there? What's going to happen? What kind of truth? Our very lives seem to hang on those moments. And the older we get, the more of those moments seem to come into our life. How will we Continue. What will we do? How will we react? What if it's bad news? How will we take it? Can we endure it? All of these things happen to us. It was the same for the criminal hanging there by Jesus' side that day. He was probably, a, well, he was called a thief. He was probably a criminal of the worst sort or he would not have been crucified. We don't know how long he was in prison. We don't know the specifics of his charges, but if his movie was 
on the big screen, it probably had an R rating for violence and language. He and his cellmate were taken out to the hill called Golgotha, the place of the skull, with another criminal named Jesus of Nazareth. This Jesus had been poorly treated. He'd been scourged, and now he was being crucified. There they hung on the hillside together. I suppose in those moments, as the thief hung there, thinking about his life, all of the things that he had ever done that passed by him, he began to think of the things he had done wrong, the things perhaps that he had done right. Maybe he thought of those times when he could have made a better decision and his life would have gone in a much happier direction. Everybody around was harassing and wagging their heads and scorning all of the prisoners up there, Jesus included. They were hanging there on those crosses, naked along the highway into Jerusalem. Everybody could see their shame. Everybody could see their embarrassment. Everybody could see the sentence that they had to endure. And sometimes criminals could hang on those crosses for three and four days, slowly, slowly suffocating to death. We don't know what it was that prompted him but as the other criminal began to rag on Jesus, he spoke up in Jesus' defense. Don't you fear God, he said. You and I are being treated justly for our crimes. And so they were. They had been caught. They had been judged. They had been sentenced. It was all right according to the law. But this Jesus has done nothing. Then he turned to Jesus and he said to him, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Words of repentance, words of faith, Humble words of trust from a man whose life was depravity. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus was something else up there. As these men were being nailed to those pieces of wood, cursing and swearing at those that put them there, this Jesus did not curse those men nailing him to that I-beam. Instead, he was praying for them. He heard them. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. He watched as all of these people mocked Jesus hanging on the cross. And Jesus did not say an evil word back. He spoke with grace and compassion, even on those who were putting him to death. There was something very different about this Jesus. He watched him. He listened to him. He heard the words coming from that center cross. And Jesus responded to him, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. Today. You know, when we make a promise, our promises are often conditional. If this and this occurs, then I will do this. Or maybe we say, Perhaps if we have the opportunity, or someday, let's plan to. But they don't always happen. Not so with Jesus. 
today. You will be with me in paradise. Those are words of hope. The man is struggling for sure. He's suffering torment. He's in absolute agony. His lungs are burning and on fire because he's hanging there. He can't lift up enough to breathe. The blood is running down his arms. But none of that, none of that on this day was what he was listening for. He wanted the answer to a very specific question. A question that all of us will ask at one time and another. And very often people at the end of life ask this question. What's going to happen to me? What's going to happen when I die? You see, we all know there is a righteous judge. Whether we want to acknowledge it or not, we know that there is a reckoning coming. And he was concerned. But Jesus hears his words of faith and repentance, and he says with absolute confidence and certainty, Today you will be with me in paradise. Not next month, not next week, not even tomorrow, today. You can imagine the hope and the peace. And yes, let's say it, even a sense of joy amidst all of that suffering that must have struck that gentleman's heart. Today he would be with Jesus. How would that make you feel, I wonder? Certainly make me feel stronger and more confident as I face the end of my life. The last few moments, the moments of crisis, the moments of truth, the moments of decision, the moments I had left in this world. Today. And you know Jesus says the same thing to you today. He says it to you because he knows who you are. He knows your life. Every hair on your head is numbered. He knows all that you have done and will ever do. And he loves you anyway. And he knows that by faith you are his. And that when you come to him, you come in humility and repentance. And God loves a repentant sinner. And he says to you and me, the very same words when we face the valley of the shadow of death today you will be with me in paradise and yet there's more isn't there there is far more to that sentence than that simple reassurance of today do you know if we had a loved one a son or a daughter flying in on an aircraft from someplace Iraq, Afghanistan, and we were waiting at the airport, you know, it really wouldn't matter so much if the walls in that airport were blue or gray. It wouldn't matter if the temperature in there was 72 degrees or 82 degrees. What would matter would be that child coming home safe and sound. Jesus said to this gentleman, today you will be with me in paradise. He would have the companionship of the Savior. It doesn't matter what paradise looks like. In the book of the Revelation, John describes it by inspiration of the Holy Spirit with flowing rivers and um, lush trees and gold and sapphires and pearls and all sorts of sparklies more wonderful than he can describe but you know it's really important not the color of the grass or whether there's orchids or lilies or or gladiolas what's really important is that you and I will be with Jesus. Jesus 
will be there when we close our eyes in the sleep of death with his arms wide open to welcome you, to embrace you, to bring you home, to be with him forever. There's comfort in knowing that our Savior will be there. And we will be with him in paradise. And that's what makes paradise so wonderful, so beautiful, so magnificent, that Jesus will be there. And as he says today in that single word in Aramaic, which we translate, I tell you the truth, Amen, Amen. I tell you the truth. Confidence, assurance, absolute trust that you can lean on and never doubt. Today, you will be with me in paradise. In Jesus' name, amen. When you come into your kingdom, Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus chose to suffer pain before going to joy, and crucifixion before entering into glory, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find this path to be the way of life and peace. We implore you to hear us, Lord. The third candle is now extinguished. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. And the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, his disciple took her into his home. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. He was delivered out to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, grant us grace so to pass through this holy time of our Lord's passion that we may receive the fruits of his cross, the pardon of our sins. The fourth candle is now extinguished. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Let us pray. Merciful Father, who did not spare your only Son, but delivered him up for us all, that he might bear our sins on the cross, grant that our hearts may be so fixed with steadfast faith in our Savior, that we may not fear the power of any adversaries. We implore you to hear us, to the Lord. The fifth candle is now extinguished. Later, knowing that all was now completed, and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I'm thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips.
We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus, since you have left us a memorial of your passion in a wonderful sacrament, grant, we pray, that we may so use this sacrament of your body and blood that the fruits of your redeeming work may continually be manifest in us. The sixth candle is now extinguished. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Let us pray. Merciful and everlasting God, you did not spare your only Son, but delivered him up for us all to bear our sins on the cross. Grant that our hearts may be so fixed with steadfast faith in him that we fear not the power of sin, death, and the devil. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. The seventh candle will be carried from the chancel. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour, for the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Let us pray. Abide with us, Lord, for it is evening and the day is far spent. Abide with us and with your whole church. Abide with us in the end of the day, in the end of our life, in the end of the world, abide with your grace and goodness, with your holy word and sacrament, with your strength and blessing. Abide with us and with all the faithful through time and eternity.